I'd like to thank Deborah Osborne very much for inviting me to be part of uh, your meeting. I'm going to be talking to you today about visual access centration of capsulotomy and IOL using automated capsulotomy devices. My financials are here at the bottom of the screen and the only one that is relevant is Excellence. I'm a consultant to a company that makes one of the lasers that I talk about in this talk. So let's think about the capsulotomy first of all. Capsulotomy started out as a crude tearing of the anterior capsule. And we see this with uh, Daviel in the 1750s, with Harold Ridley with his Hess forceps in the 1950s, with Charlie Kelman with the Christmas tree. And then we move on to the 1980s with the can opener capsulotomy and Dick Kratz. And then in the mid-1980s, we had a new approach. This was the continuous curvilinear capsulorexis. Howard Gimbel gave us continuous, Kim Shimizu called it curvilinear, and Thomas Neuhan called it capsulorexis. But the object of what they were trying to achieve was a smooth edge. And you can see there different methods of trying to achieve this, each of them using a sister tone. But where they were first to perform this? Calvin Ferco from North Dakota began using a continuous tear circular capsulotomy in 1978, but he didn't present this at a meeting until 1986. A number of ophthalmologists have written confirming seeing this surgery performed by him in the early 1980s. And here we can see him doing the surgery now using the Storts irrigating cystotome, using a technique quite similar to what we saw from Howard Gimbel. So it may be that he should be given credit for being the first to do this, even if he didn't popularize the technique as the others we've seen before have done. Although many still use a needle for capsulorexis, Peter Utrata designed special forceps for the capsulotomy in 1988. We can see them here. And this made the capsulotomy much more controllable for many surgeons. But what were the consequences of this new capsulotomy? Well, it meant that the IOL should and could be placed reliably and securely in the capsular bag. Previous FACO techniques requiring the nucleus to be tilted would become much more difficult. And therefore, we needed new faker techniques, and these were developed to overcome these difficulties. So there was chip and flip, divide and conquer, nuclear fractus, faker chop, and pre chop. But what about the centration of the IOL in all of this? And we can see this in this study from Pablo Perez Mourinho and Susana Marcos. It was a, a, a custom model eye that they used, and they did this with three aspheric type lenses, the Hoya Vivinex, the Abitoc uh, Technus, and the Alcon IQ. And you can see the further uh, degree of decentration that you get, both with the Strail Ratio and also with chromatic aberration, the, the greater decrease you get in the quality of vision. But could the CCC be made more precise to improve its centration? Here we can see the Tassignon ring, which Marie-José Tassignon has uh, invented. And this is placed on the surface of the capsule, which is uh, centered on the pupillary margin. The problem with this is that although we have it centered on the pupil, it's not centered on the, uh, the, the center of the, uh, of the visual axis. We can see something similar here with the various capsulotomy ring. This is again placed on the, uh, on the anterior capsule. It's centered on the pupil. But as you'll see, once the capsulotomy is created, it's centered on the pupil, but not on the visual axis, which is provided by the first package image. And we'll more, talk more about that in a moment. Here we are. We've now removed this from the eye. And that's where the capsulotomy is you can see that it doesn't bear too much relation to the, uh, the visual axis. There's the first package image. We use a corneal marker. Again, 
this is being used and centered on the pupil rather than the uh, first Purkinje image. And you can see there that the Purkinje image is not centered where you would want it to be. You can also use the heads up uh, overlay on the microscope that you get with Varian. Again, the surgeon here is using the center of the pupil rather than the visual axis. And although you can, it, it's useful to help with the sizing of the capsulotomy, it's not useful for centration unless you use different landmarks. And we can see this again here. The centration is not on the Perkinje image, it's on the pupil. However, there was still the issue with the CCC that you needed a good reflex to be reliable. I'm sure all of us remember the days before we had any other means of uh, doing the capsulotomy in these white eyes, which made life very difficult. First thing that came along to try and help us was the Clarity High Frequency Radio Diathermy. And in fact, this has been recently revived by Atley for doing the capsulotomy. The problem was that this created a ragged edge which wasn't nearly as strong as a manual CCC. But the use of a simple vital stain, Tripan Blue, solved this, and this was first publicized by Garrett Mellis in 99, 1999. But in fact, it was Minas Coroneo working in the outback in Australia who first uh, used this dye to create the uh, capsulotomy in some of the very advanced cataracts that he saw there. In fact, he uh, holds the patent on the, the use of uh, this particular dye for capsulotomy. And we shall see the importance of this type of staining soon in another approach. So why might we be concerned about the size and centration of the capsulotomy anyway? If it's not round, it can lead to asymmetric contraction and IOL decentration, as we can see here. On the left, there's early fibrosis at one month postoperatively in this eye with a silicon lens. Here we can see a more advanced asymmetric fibrosis and the lens is starting to decenter. And you can see this more acutely in the image on the right. If it's too small, then it will create difficulty with your surgery. And also there's a later risk of anterior capsular shrinkage. You can see on the left how much this capsule has contracted. On the right, even more so, so that we've got a really small um, opening in the pupil with this capsule phimosis. And these both have been reported in the literature, both from Jim Gills and also from a group in, in Korea. Shrink wrapping of the IOL by the capsule to lessen PCO and the overlapping IOL edge will also avoid lens tilt. This is from a study using very high uh, resolution cameras from David Spalton and his team. They have a couple of studies here and what they showed was that if the capsulotomy is not on the edge of the IOL, and this uh, image on the left is at one year, PCO is already starting to come under the edge of this Acrosoft lens. On the other hand, on the right, you've got three years out from surgery with a capsulotomy that has got 360 degree coverage of the IL, and it's a completely different story. Our cell centration on the visual axis and stability are particularly important for multifocal and toric IOLs. Here we can see on the right, the first and third Perkinje images in good position in multifocal and toric IOLs. You can see this again here, where the image is not where you'd like it to be. And although there is coverage, it's decentered as far as the capsulotomy is concerned. If you look at a study from the, um, uh, Naj and his group, they demonstrated in 2011 that the femtosecond laser was likely to be more accurate because of the sizing, providing that you got 360 degree coverage. 
but it's also important if you're going to have a capsulotomy fixed IOL. On the left, you can see the femtis IOL, which is used with flanges to be held in the perfectly sized anterior capsulotomy. And it's really important to make this work that you get the visual axis. This is also true with the bag in the lens from Marie-Josée Tassignon that you can see here on the left. The capsulotomy centration is not obvious. If you look at this image here, you can see that there are a number of different axes. We've got the pupillary axis, which we've just been discussing. We've got the visual axis that goes through to the fovea, and then the optical axis. And this gives us angle gamma, alpha, and angle kappa. But which one of these is the critical one for best visual function? Capsulotomy centration is a non-trivial issue due to the fact that the eye is asymmetric in 3D. There also can be intraoperative patient tilt, which is particularly important with the femtosecond laser. And if you have asymmetric madrasis, as is often the case, then you will result, this will result in the resting location of the IOL not being where you want it to be. Also, this has been shown in studies that there can be movement backwards and forwards from different sizes of the uh, anterior capsulotomy. And this is further exacerbated in a hyperopic patient where there may be a large angle kappa. And you can see on the graphic over here where the visual axis may be in relation to the pupil center and the capsulotomy and IOL position. If you look at the mesopic pupil and center it to the visual axis, the average displacement is actually slightly nasal at 0.3 millimeters, slightly inferior at 0.1 millimeters. And in the worst case scenario, you can actually get as much as a 0.6 millimeter displacement in hyperopic eyes. And this is important because of the uh, you want to have, particularly with a biospheric uh, IOL, minimal decentration. Because once you get beyond about 0.3 millimeters, the effect of the asphericity disappears. Some small decentration between 0.07 and 0.21 is normal, as we've seen. Anything greater than 0.4 millimeters does cause significant retinal image degradation, and it's particularly true with aspheric and multifocal and toric lenses. This was shown in Sauer's study in 2015. The effect of IOL displacement on visual function is more pronounced as uh, in the study that Ashina et al. did, where they found this was particularly true in aberration correcting IOLs when compared to spherical and non-standard aberration correcting IOLs, and also in multifocal versus monofocal lenses. However, in a study which is about to be published in the Journal of Cataract Surgery, where they used a finite element model, they felt that although there was, in their conclusion, an anterior capsular regularity or, or eccentricity with IOL tilt and decentration and rotation and vaulting in a numerically significant number of eyes, they felt that this was optically negligible, which I found rather surprising when they qualified this remark by saying that the stress, which is much greater at capsular bag equator compared with the rexus edge and very asymmetrically disturbed in all cases, they felt that they, the biological process would, uh, where big, big bag shrinkage would actually could produce some decentration. So they were only looking at it, in fact, at the very point at which the lens was implanted during initial surgery. As I've said, if you use the Perkins images, this is a study from Vance Thompson, Jack Holliday, and David uh, Stratovan. They could use these Perkins images as a special relationship that would give them a surrogate sign of patient fixation to assist in capsulotomy centration during cataract surgery. Here we can see an example that we've seen already of pupil centration not on the visual axis. And this has resulted in 360 degree coverage, but not centration for the IOL where you'd like it to be. So if the limbus and the pupil are not the best landmarks, what was likely to yield a better centration? We've seen also from Zoltan Nagy's studies that uh, the femtosecond laser 
would change the way that capsulotomies would be perceived. Uh, because for the first time, we could make capsulotomies of a given size, which were truly circular, in a given position, and with little risk of tear out during the capsulotomy, and without the variables of the manual technique. But there were caveats. A second room might be needed for the laser, which would interfere with surgical flow. The cost of the device was high, as was the running costs. And we've seen from a number of studies that the advantages really needed to be shown. Here we can see the femtosecond laser in action. Capsulotomy is being created. There's the laser emission. This then moves on to the treatment of the nucleus and ultimately the, the incisions can be done. It looks amazing but as I've said the machines cost significantly in terms of capital and running costs. Nadge in one of his original studies showed that the circularity was certainly better than the manual capsulotomy. But what about centration with flax? We haven't really looked at that. Here's a study which compared prospective apex-centered versus standard pupil-centered femtosecond laser capsulotomy and cataract surgery. Their conclusion was that the centration on the lens apex didn't influence the amount of IOL tilt, but it was important as far as stability of the orientation of the lens. They haven't, in fact, investigated to see how this might pan out as time goes by, but as we've seen already, if the capsulotomy is not on the uh, uh, well centered, as far as the eye well is concerned, you can get decentration as the capsulotomy contracts and the capsule around. Here's a study using OCT tomography with three dimensional confocal structured imaging and with a system guided femtosecond laser capsulotomy versus manual continuous CCC. And they showed that both of the approaches using the femtosecond laser were better for predictability of size of capsulotomy and also for centration in the immediate post-surgery group. And you expect that over time, this again would be better for the better centered laser capsulotomies. I've mentioned about the use of tripan blue. Here we can see a coaxial Purkinje image with tripan blue capsule landmark. We know that the Perkin images, as I've said, are well accepted for cornea refractive surgery and the visual axis, but what about for IOR centration? If you have this tripan blue centrally placed located anterior capsule staining, is this going to be useful? It's been found in a high proportion of eyes, over 95%. And the diameter of this feature varies between two and four millimeters. What is interesting is that this landmark was actually noted in studies whereby the capsular cap from femtosecond laser surgery was first of all stained to make it easier to see in white cataracts which then removed. And you can see it very clearly here just using standard tripan blue. What was interesting that although this feature was reported Nobody discussed it or thought there was any significance to it whatsoever. So here's another approach using a laser that takes advantage of the tripan blue capsule landmark. David Mordant is the designer of the laser. He was also the designer of the laser that uh, Johnson & Johnson have. And the advantage of the capsule laser is that it has a much lower capsule cost, capital cost than Femto. There's also a much lower cost per case than both Femto and PPC using Zepto. There's no disruption in the surgical flow. It uses minimal space in the operating theater. And it produces consistent accuracy, sizing and circularity, as well as centration. So how does this laser work? It operates through the absorption of the orange wavelength, 590 nanometers laser energy, onto a tripan blue stained capsule, which then converts type 4 collagen to amorphous collagen. 
the triple helix of collagen undergoes thermal unwinding due to disruption of the hydrogen bonds, which allow shrinkage. And we can see that here. Above, we've got the type 4 collagen below the and below the amorphous collagen. How does it work further? Well, as the collagen undergoes this phase change, it creates the capsulotomy with a rim that has high degree of elasticity and tear strength associated with amorphous collagen. Here we can see SEMs of the disc edge. On the left, you can see that the edge is rolled over. On the right, you can see a cross section which highlights where the amorphous collagen is. How does it work again in real life? The laser is continuous but not pulsed like Femto. We're going to see some surgery from Pavel Stadolka, who's done much of the work on this. It's a scanned laser. It works in a single circular pattern to create the single curve linear capsulotomy, and it does this in under 0.3 seconds. You can see now we've got the laser focused with the two dots on the right. It's been focused so that the laser can be fired and once it fires the capsulotomy is created and can see how well centered it is. We did a study looking at the strength of the capsulotomy edge comparing paired cadaver eyes which were treated with flax, CCC and caps laser and these were each individually compared. So flax was compared to CCC, flax was compared to caps laser and CCC was compared to caps laser. And what we found was that if you looked at the relative tear strength and took CCC as 100%, flax was 70% and capsule laser was 150%. And this has been reported in the BJO. We looked at another study comparing two match groups of eyes, 125 patients were involved, 63 eyes treated with capsule laser, 62 with CCC. The primary endpoint was capsulotomy precision, and this was statistically better for sizing accuracy, circularity, and centration precision. We looked at a secondary endpoint of safety, and there were no adverse events for either way of creating the capsulotomy. And we also observed that the capsule laser capsulotomies were 100% free floating with 360 degree IOL coverage. We did a meta-analysis comparing some of the available literature for Femto and Manual with capsule laser. You can see that the capsule laser appeared to be much more favorable than either of the other modalities. A clinical study has just been completed looking at the intraoperative capsule landmark identification and the use with coaxial Perkins images. The first 100 eyes the group one had the capsulotomy centered on the midriatic induced pupil. The second hundred eyes were capsulotomy centered on the uh, landmark. Of the 200 eyes, over 94% had the landmark correlated and coincidence with the Perkinji image with displacement of less than 0.1 millimeters. Likewise, the co coaxial Perkinji image and IL centration were also co coincident within 0.1 mill of a millimeter. Midriatic pupil centered capsulotomies were notably decentered from the IOL from the well by 0.3 millimeters, whereas the tripan blue centered capsulotomies maintained their superior correlation with the IOLs with a displacement of 0.1 millimeters and all reported distance confidence intervals were less than 0.1 millimeters with a p-value of 0.05. The benefits of the TBC landmark being located on the anterior capsule include the lack of sensitivity to tilt, confirmation of patient fixation, and serving as an alternate landmark to the Perkinger images. Here we can see the correlation with the Perkinger image, which is also the same as the visual axis. And there are six examples here. If you look at the control arm centered on the pupil, you can see what the displacement is between 0.1 and up to 0.5 millimeters. And there's an example of this on the right. 
we look at the Purkinje image, image to IOL pos uh, position with the TBCL centration, you can see that this is much, much more accurate. We had some further thoughts about this study, because not only was the capsulotomy centration on the Purkinje image superior to pupil centration, but also it was interesting that the resultant IOL position appears to be centered on the visual axis, which implies that the capsulotomy bag is centered on the visual, not the optical axis. And the TBC landmark is associated with the anatomy of the capsular bag. Here both, hence both, are centered on the visual axis. Are there other advanced devices which can assist the surgeon to create the capsulotomy? We've mentioned also already precision pulse capsulotomy with Zepto. This now has a new handpiece with a new nitinol ring, which delivers more consistent energy for strong and precise capsulotomies. The modified suction cap allows improved proximal suction for more consistent circular and centered capsulotomies. And there's an easier to use handpiece with a more ergonomic design for much smoother usability. And here we can see the new power console, which has an LED display for improved user experience. And the device cuts capsulotomy of 5.2 millimeters. Vance Thompson is seen operating here with the new device. Rapid pulse, multipulse energy is what causes the phase transition in the water molecules, and the, this creates the cut in the capsule. So first, the suction device and the incision finder are placed on the capsule. And you can use the Perkinje images here seen to help center it. You allow the tip to become recircularized. Keep the push rod in the neck to allow for a certain amount of centration. Here we can see the centration going on. If you keep it in the neck, it allows you to keep it positioned more easily. Suction will then be applied once you're happy that you've got it centered and the capsulotomy created. You push back the BSS and then you can remove the capsule. This is one of the first studies which Kevin Walsh and Vance Thompson did with the device, which gave them hope that this would be very useful in the future. This is what the an SEM of the capsule atomy cap looks like. It's actually quite similar to what you see with the, uh, with the uh, capsule laser. We've already talked about using the, the uh, images to get centration, and this is the way that Vance Thompson describes his streamlined approach for anchoring cataract surgery and trochlear lens centration on the visual patient, on the patient's visual axis. However, this device is not in completely foolproof. There have been a number of studies uh, done by Brendan Vogt in his group where they found that they've had tear out from what appeared to be perfect capsulotomies using the, uh, using the device. But in summary, let's see where we've got to with this. Using the diluted pupil for centration leads to capsulotomy and IOL decentration. Decentered IOLs lead to degradation of visual quality, and this is greater in aspheric and multifocal optics. There is reduced IOL tilt with improved stability with a well-centered capsulotomy. And there's also an improved 360 degree coverage, which means that there is reduced risk of early PCO. The Perkinje images assist in placing capsulotomy on the visual axis with PPC, as we've seen. And the tripan blue capsule landmark, which is consistent with the first and third Perkinje images, is a method for centration of independent of patient fixation when you were used with the, uh, the superior so with the, the capsule laser using the uh, selective laser capsulotomy approach. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm sorry I can't be with you uh, to answer questions. Unfortunately, I will be in hospital having some surgery and uh, hopefully that will go well. If you do have any interesting questions, I'm sure there will be one or two, please send them through to uh, Deborah Osborne and I'd be happy to respond to them by email. Thanks very much again. Bye bye.